Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Female Entrepreneurs Worldwide Online Mentoring Sessions with the project, as you know, hashtag as few anything. We're successful entrepreneurs, industry experts, and members of the community get the chance to be mentored. My name is Jamilet, and I am the founder of Louder. I'm going to be the host today. Thank you for being here. And remember that we want you to be part of the interaction. And to do so, you can type your question in the chat box or raise your hand, make a movement to ask the question directly to our speaker. The theme for today, how to bring an app idea to life. And meet our expert, Elena Effendi. She's an award-winning, innovative, passionate, and well-connected serial entrepreneur with 22 years of experience in the TV and film industry producing some of the top-rated content in Malaysia. Elena is the founder of FE2 Productions and Engage Communications, and she has worked as a consultant and producer for international events like the Laureus World Sports Awards, and has produced and direct over 200 hours of television shows. She's also had previous business in the F&B and retail, running three restaurants, one cafe, and four fashion stores in Kuala Lumpur. With a knack of business in branding, Elena is currently working on building Malaysia's ultimate food platform, Sidab TV. So without further ado, welcome Selena here on our online stage. Hi, Selena. How are you? Elena, how are you? Hi, hi. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you. And we were just having this backstage discussion on food and how food is so important, especially nowadays that a lot of us, millennials, Gen Z, we don't have that much time to learn on how to properly cook healthy meals. But before we start on that, can you tell us a little bit more about your background, Elena? How did you start in this industry? Yes, well, as um, thank you. Thank you, Jamalette. And um, well, it was a, it feels like a long time now when you say when I hear it out loud, and you say 22 years, <laughs> it's like, okay, yes, it's been that long. I started when I was a teenager, obviously. But um, it, it's been uh, quite a journey. I actually started um, as an architectural student. That's oh. where I started. Uh, yeah, that's what I, I studied. And I went completely opposite direction and started in television, um, which I fell in love with completely. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the past 20 plus years, uh, producing and directing. Um, and a couple years ago, the opportunity for Sadap TV, which as you know, means uh, in Malaysia, Sadap is uh, yummy, delicious, um, Tasty. Uh, we use the same word for many, many different things over here. And uh, essentially, it's, um, yes, the ultimate food platform. That's our goal. So we started um, about two years ago, almost two years ago. Okay. But I only put the team together very recently. Um, it's been a very exciting, very exciting time for us all um, and really challenging, I got to say. Um, compared to some of the other businesses I've done, this has been one of the harder ones I gotta say oh. yeah I think but it's also been one of the more rewarding um, but perhaps it's uh, perhaps it's due to more experience and um, uh, a very good team and um, and the timing of things I think that's that's what's what, that's what's driving me at the moment what would you say make it so hard because also you were saying to me backstage that obviously the f and b industry is one of the hardest how to keep it and grow it so what would make it different from that type of industry to now developing an app do you i found it very interesting that you have an architectural background you decided to jump into something completely different which is obviously an entrepreneurial mindset and then now developing this new app do you have to also have any tech experience or this is because you have a, a team of experts that are helping you that's a really good question i think what's been key for us um here is to to really focus on the idea you know and um having that big idea and that's kind of like what i've been doing in television anyway you come up with this idea and you can try and visualize it and then you've got to find the right people and the right put the right team together mm. to 
uh, be able to make it into, uh, you know, in, in, into real, something real, something tangible. So it's been interesting because of the food background that I had, and I was telling you earlier that our biggest problem was actually H HR. It was, it was a very difficult time to manage um, our staff in the restaurants, in the kitchens. Uh, a lot of them were also foreign, um, um, a lot of Indonesian workers, and um, it was difficult to manage that. Um, and so now in the food industry here in Malaysia, and I'm sure in many parts of the world, it's been quite challenging over the past few years, uh, especially last year and this year. Um, but where we have headed in, ter in terms of doing the app was to make and create a service that will make everybody, you know, uh, makes everybody's lives a little bit easier. I think that's the goal of the app, essentially, at, at the end of the day, um, any app for that matter. Yeah. you know, is for us to, it, and that's where the idea came from, is how is it going to make my life easier and my friends' lives easier with this app? Um, and that was the big idea. And it grew from there. Creative process, as you were saying, it's, it's such an important part of putting, like launching your ideas. But then some of us, when, when it comes to creative process, because we have all these ideas as an entrepreneur and when we want to work on everything at the same time, how do you narrow down your idea to be so focused that you don't lose the objective and you don't get tangled into this ocean of many creativity? Yeah, that's, again, a very good question. It's, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people that enjoy being creative. Um, mm -hmm. and I really love exploring new things and I love learning new things. So this has been a huge journey of learning. Um, one of the first things we had to do and who anybody who's interested in doing an app needs to do is, you know, really research and mm -hmm. really analyze the market and make sure that, you know, there is a need for what it is that we're creating. I suppose that's, that's valid for any business for that matter. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, what, what service we're going to offer and what problem we're going to solve for people. And, and once you've validated that idea and make sure that you've done your research and analysis well, then we kind of like move into that next, uh, into that next stage, but always, always keeping that same goal. I think if you manage that same end goal, you can, you can um, maneuver around that goal. You have the same end goal, but you need to adapt. You need to, uh, you need to be flexible with your ideas a little bit too. And I think for very creative people, it's like very narrow sometimes for them and they like fixate on one idea. And it's like, you know, they don't want to move out of that little, little shell of an idea, but it's really important. And from what I see is I, I think it's really important that you allow it to flow and, and develop and evolve into its final being, you know, and I don't mean to sound so ethereal, but <laughs> And you know, I, I guess that's that's maybe why I enjoy TV so much. And and set up TV, um, you know, we focus on content uh, or food, um, not just for recipes, but of course, right now we're developing all our content for. Um, and, and you've seen it all online. People are all doing their own food content, but we want to create a space where everybody can give us that content to share. That's part of the goal for set up TV as well user-generated content. You say space and also to help people save time and make it easy for them. Yes. I want to know that with your film and a TV background, was is this an, a competitive advantage for you? Because as you're saying, you know how to go through the creative process and the flow. What if I don't have anything like that? I come from an industry that is a little bit more narrow-minded, let's say finance, and I want to jump into embarking uh, in the app development. Would you need... background um, to another purely on the basis that if you suddenly find from finance you want to be a chef there are many 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 success stories where that does happen so um, I think most entrepreneurs would tell you the same thing if you really love what you're doing and this is the basis in which that 
all businesses stem from, all successful business um, people will tell you that if you're loving it, you don't feel like it's a job. I mean, yeah. um, and, and you know, the great thing about today's technology is that we can learn so easily. I mean, there's University of Google, obviously, but there's, you know, there's so many more, um, there's so much access, ease of access to information and knowledge today and the business of knowledge today, I think is also an area that is very interesting. Digitally, you're asking me as well. And that's where we've all gone, that's why we're here today because we are sharing our knowledge, we're sharing our information. We're all open to learning something new and we have access to it. It's, it's not like when, I hate to say it, it's not like when I was, you know, 20 years ago where I'd be having to look through a library of books for the same information and, and in hope that, you know, and reading biographies and, and, and hoping that I can emulate somebody I, you know, that I believe in. Today, we have so many resources. And so if you really love something, do it, do it well, learn, keep learning. And you don't necessarily have to be creative to create an app. You just need to have that idea and, and, um, and, be, and, and be sure that you, know, you plan and you research well. And I think that's really, really key. And, and, and for TV, that's what I do when we come up with a, a show, we need to research, we need to plan and, and then we build and then we see how it goes. And sometimes it's fantastic, sometimes not so great, but you know, that's part of the learning process. Yeah, but everybody, everybody that we have had an interview with, they have the same idea. If you don't fail, you don't know. So you, at least we have to try, right? Going back to that process of building the app, is there a step-by-step -step or, or a, like a funnel step-by-step -step how to build an app that you can share with our audience? How did you do with your own app? Yes, for sure. Um, as I mentioned before, there's probably mainly five main steps, okay? Um, first of all, you do the research. As I mentioned before, you know, you do all the ana analytics. Make sure you validate your idea. Um, and yeah, go on Google and check that there's actually a market that wants something that you have this idea for. Uh, then number two, I'd say plan. Plan really, really well. Don't rush. I think a lot of the time, um, and, and to be fair, some of my businesses in the past, I got so excited that I'd rush into it. And, you know, and I realized I didn't plan it that well. And that's when the business uh, the suffers. Uh, and essentially you suffer because you're trying to, you know, you're trying to do things too quickly. So have a bit of patience. Patience is a good thing. Um, and I suppose number three is find the right people to build. You were asking me about the tech side of it earlier. Yep. I have no technology background. Um, I do not know how to code. I do not understand the design um, world of UI UX. And this is something I had to learn again um, was from reading and from, from learning and, and researching. But if you find the right partners, uh, which is so key, and I think that's the same in any business, you need to have the right partners and the right team to be able to create you know, your, your business. Um, so if you can, then you get the right team hired to do the development and the creative side. If that's not what you already do yourself, of course. Um, fourth, once you're done and you're, you're created, you wanna market, go out and go and market your product, launch it and go crazy. You know, I think go all out. Um, and then your last stage really is just keep yourself updated. We need to keep changing. We need to keep um, evolving. Keep, and sometimes we just need to pivot. Sometimes if the idea didn't work the way we thought it was going to work, give it a different way. And, you know, maybe that's, and, and just be flexible to being able to do that. Yeah. I love the word pivot. It's such a buzzword this this day and age. It but is. it, it, it really, really is very is. important to be an entrepreneur and not to stay stuck in one idea or positioning. How do you choose your team? Because you were saying before that you've been doing this project for over two years, but then you recently built the team. Where do you get these people from? Do you have specific platforms like communities or do you go to headhunters? How do you get a gist 
of who are you going to be working with and if it's going to work or not? Yeah, this is the hardest thing. I think this is one of the toughest things that we, a lot of us face today in business and, and that's across the board. I think also because we want to hire young uh, creative minds, I, I have found it hard to harness their talents. When, okay, you were asking, how do I find them? I started Sit Up TV on a team of two people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how we started. Um, and then we grew to six just last year in June. And just to find those six was um, an incredible challenge. Um, I, I found a great partner who's now my GM who you met earlier. Um, and, you know, that was a 3 a.m. idea during lockdown that we thought, hey, you know, we can really build this idea into something great. And that's really important. Your team must have the same goals and the same, you know, uh, train of thought. That's really important, I think. Um, how do we find them? Sometimes I found by word of mouth has been the best way. Sometimes if you're lucky, like I was, I am, I have a friend who's now uh, part of my business, but, yeah, headhunters do, of course, do their work very, very well. But the past one and a half years has been the worst and most difficult time to find people. Yeah, um, I think, and HR is an ongoing issue for everyone. With, and I don't, uh, I don't dismiss the the youth. I sound so old saying that, but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it's harder to. I I have staff from my production company who've been with me for twenty years. This is very highly unusual for, I think, the younger generation. I hate to say that, it makes me really sound old, but I find that they don't stay as long with you. And um, yeah. I'm not, I don't have an answer as to why, um, but that, that is probably one of our biggest headaches right now uh, is building a team, building a good team. And when you find that team though, really, like look after them, hold on to them and look after them and don't be an evil boss. And, you know, it's, it's finding that balance between being a, a tough boss, but being a kind one and, and a thoughtful one. Yeah. Don't let them go. And you're right. It seems like because there's so many opportunities and the world is open, we can work for someone in the U.S. without having to be there. And that's Absolutely. why we can change so often. Do yes. you have any team member that is remote or, or everybody is in, from your team are in Malaysia? Well, all of our team are based in Malaysia, but I've actually never actually physically met my developer, except for maybe once. So my app developer, I've met him once physically in real life. So everything else has been done online. So, uh, and I think it's very common for everyone to do that now. Uh, we've become so used to online work and working from home in the past two years, I think everyone's just become, it's become second nature to us. And um, there, are good in, there are good and bad elements to that, as we all know, but uh, it's actually been quite good in the sense that it's been efficient. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's improved our efficiency a lot. Mm -hmm. But I'm- you know, How do you I, make sure I, that the, the communication comes across? that what you want for the app and your vision comes across if you have never physically met this person and perhaps you don't know their style 100 percent, or perhaps you do but what would be a a tip for us entrepreneurs to make sure that we communicate assertively when we're working in this style of of new work from home logistics um i guess my tip would be you know be very Try and be as articulate and plan everything um, as best you possibly can uh, when you're having that those discussions. Keep them short. I don't know. I I don't know why my Zoom meetings end up being three hours long when we never used to have three hour long meetings in real life. Um, so I do try and you know try and keep it short and succinct because really, at the end of the day, um, communication is is something that's tremendously different today than it used to be. Um, and I personally mm -hmm. enjoy meeting people face to face and in person. Uh, I feel I'm more myself than you. You just need to be yourself on camera. Some people forget and then they put on a different face. 
you know, and I don't know, do you know what I mean by that? I'm, I'm sure you do, but don't be that other person. Be the person that you are even on camera. Uh, I'm not a person that enjoys being on camera. I love shooting and being behind the camera, but, um, but it's interesting that some people do put on a different persona sometimes, which is, is a little bit dis, disarming and disconcerting. So you need to be really honest and, and be yourself when you're meeting people online. I think that's really important because I think you can tell when they're not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we want to pass that superficial level to still feel that we're having a more personalized relationship and created yeah. that connection despite the fact that we are not physically there. You said you like to be behind the scenes, but now you are in front of the scenes. You have to be there because you're the face of your company. You, you communicate, you market it, you brand it. You're the one perhaps going and finding new business or, or new ideas. How was that transition for you? Because I have to say, you're doing it very well. You sound and you look very natural, like you're enjoying this. Well, yeah, th this is also part of the 20 year experience. <laughs> I gotta say, um, I mean, I go in front of the TV or I go in front of, a, you know, of an audience only for, for expanding the business for purely for marketing, purely to promote the business, purely to get ideas and to get out there because I have these ideas in my head, but I still need to meet people um, like those um, yeah. here in this community. And, um, and I think that's the only way we're really, really going to learn. Uh, is that we need to keep talking and keep sharing and keep absorbing what we can from other people. So um, it's it's not new to me to be in front of TV, but I just, I, I'm not as good at it as you are. You're obviously extremely natural in front of the camera <laughs> when you talk to camera. It's a real skill, let me tell you, it's a real skill. Um, and I'm, I'm very, uh, you know, I have a lot of admiration for those who can do it. Um, but having that confidence is important. That's the only key thing that I had to learn. I was an incredibly shy child. I would be the child. That oh, I can't, I don't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is what people say. But if you ask my parents, I'm the child that would open the front door when people come and I hide behind the door. I'll hide under the, under the table. Um, and I didn't come into, into being more comfortable until a very, yeah, very long time, much, much later in, in my life, which has, I suppose now, yeah, helped me a lot. And confidence is a big thing when it comes to business. We need to have the confidence in what we do, who we are, um, what we're trying to, what we're trying to sell, I suppose, the idea, you know, and, and just have complete and utter faith in, in ourselves to know that we're doing the best we possibly can. Yeah. As you were saying, if you don't sound or look natural, then how are people going to buy what you're selling or how they're going to follow your idea if they think you're kind of fake? But maybe you're not fake because you want to be fake. It's just you're, you have lack of confidence and that would undermine your message and your branding. You mentioned that you have 20 years of experience and that's why it's a little bit more natural or easier for you to be branding yourself and marketing yourself and your services. Because it's obviously attached to your name. You have a name in the industry. And perhaps that's why also people follow you and trust you. Would you have any tips for our entrepreneurs that are just starting? And they would say, yeah, that sounds easy. You have the 20 years of experience, but I'm just starting. And I'm really like that Elena from when she yeah. was a child. I want to hide behind the door. Some people have told me, if you don't have it, hire someone to do it for you. But then if your brand is attached to your name, how do we do that? Is there any specific experience or tip from your 20 years that you can give us that you say, okay, this is the things that, or these are the things that have helped me very, very much to start building that confidence? Yes. Well, you know, if you have a brand that's in your name and you chose that name to be yours, right? And that you chose to embark upon that idea, it means that inside, there is the confidence. You just need to let it out, yeah. right? And, and a support system, and you'll, you'll read that anywhere. A support system is so important. I have an amazing husband who basically supports everything and tells me I'm the best, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, which, which I'm very blessed. You know, he, 
trust me, he tells me when I'm not good too. So that's really good that they're honest. But, uh, and I have, you know, parents who have been supportive. Strangely enough, my parents have probably been um, the, a, a leading, they play a leading role in the sense that they never felt that what I did was good enough. And because of that, um, I think uh, it's deep down kind of made me push myself even more to prove to them I'm wrong. And, you know, we all have, we, we, we all have probably have that sort of experience in a way. And then, you know, I look back at it and go, so silly to think that way, but we couldn't help it when we were younger. We felt we were, you know, trying to prove ourselves to, to, to our parents. And um, I think that's what I did for a very long time um, until I had my husband. And I realized that I didn't actually need that to propel me. It was all inside me already. And for most entrepreneurs, if you're already on that journey, it is already inherently in you. Yeah. There are only two types of people in this world. There are those who are willing to take the risks and be entrepreneurs, or there are those who enjoy the safety of, um, of a different type of work and a different type of a career. So I don't, I, don't think, um, I don't think you'll go into becoming an entrepreneur if you didn't deep down really believe in yourself. So you gotta dig that out of you and, and, and let that propel you yourself because you're the only person that's going to be there for you at the end of the day, really. Uh, you've got to believe in your own voice. You've got to believe in your own talent and your own skill. And I question it 22 years and I'm still questioning whether I'm doing anything right. I've, I've had failed businesses. I've had difficult businesses. I've had, you know, uh, some successful ones, but then circumstances don't allow me to continue. But I haven't, I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe a really, really important thing that you don't give up. You gotta, you gotta just battle through it and then, and have the faith. Yeah. I love, I love what you just said, this statement, Alina, of if you are already courageous enough to be in the entrepreneurship journey, you must have that confidence somewhere there. And it's very important to have that community to cheer you up and to tell you your goods and your don'ts, right? Yeah. Like this community, that's why we love exactly. the female entrepreneurs worldwide because we can have this platform to share and to get experience and to learn. Yes. With the uh, your app development and obviously growing your team, which values do you think are the ones that are bringing most strength to your business? Um, okay, well, with the app, let me, let me talk a bit about the app, actually. I've not even really spoken about it at all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited with everything else. Uh, so that TV app, actually, which we hope will be launching in a week, uh, we're still in testing. I'm, and, and I've read somewhere that they said, you know, don't worry about it. It's not perfect. Just launch anyway. But I, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, so I kind of want to wait till I'm, I'm more, when I feel we're more ready. Um, what it does is essentially it's it's going to be a platform whereby we have four main four main functions. One is the recipes, which I talked about, and uh, I've realized that a lot of the recipes around the world are um, or okay. One we focus sorry one we focus mainly on Malaysian food and Asian food, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of the recipes out there are a mix of so many things that you can't find them. So we wanna be the one place that you can find Malaysian and Asian food. Um, number two, we can then export your, if, if from the app, you can export the recipe that you like. Let's say you wanna make a, um, a chicken rice. <laughs> I don't know why I choose chicken rice. But <laughs> it's very popular, it's a very popular dish. Uh, chicken rice. And you, know, we've, um, you can then download that, of course, that recipe to the shopping list and you can send that shopping list to your husband. I don't know why I make him go shopping. Um, he never comes back with the right stuff, but um, yes, you can export that shopping list to whomever's going shopping. And then we also have a section for a directory. The directory is for mm -hmm. Malaysian businesses, which we found um, during our lockdown here in Malaysia, we found that we were messaging each other, all these wives and moms were messaging each other where to find fish where to find bread, where to find um, fresh produce because supermarkets were not getting their uh, deliveries. And it was very, very hard. So we wanted to support the smaller businesses. So now on the app, we have created a platform for them to, to be uh, visible. 
So that was quite important to me and also for home, smaller home businesses. So we're curating those um, because many people who, who lost their jobs in the last year or so from airline pilots to mm. um, you know, several, several people in the media industry as well, they've gone to food and they're making food from home, catering and so on, and we wanna support them. Um, and the last part within the, the app is gonna be our content. In the content, we have things like tips and hacks, which I mentioned before, um, which now when you download, you'll be able to cut those onions, okay? <laughs> get out get in that you know which one to get now, because <laughs> there's so many types, right? It's like, which one? Yeah, exactly. So, um, and we'll add all of that information. Um, we, we had to pivot our business because we were not able, due to lockdown, we were not able to produce the shows we had planned. We planned hundreds of hours of shows and we couldn't produce anything last year. So um, what we did was instead created meal kits from our recipes. Okay. Yeah. So Was that like a natural transition? You were saying, okay, was, I already have this an channel. Idea decision with, with Amy, my, my GM, and we were just like, yeah, let's do meal kits. You know, people want to cook at home, but don't want the hassle of going to the supermarket and dealing, uh, you know, with, having to all the SOPs. So we wanted to make it easier for everyone. So everything's prepped, all your onions, chilies are prepped and cut and ready for you. You just literally chuck it into a, a frying pan and a wok and you're done. <laughs> wow, that sounds so, lovely. That sounds like my thing. <laughs> <laughs> even I can cook now. And I would say that even my husband of 17 years who never cooked for me ever can now cook. He has no, he has no excuse. So, that's one of the pivots that we had to, to do in the business where we could not um, produce the content that we wanted to. Uh, mm -hmm. And we, we focused on creating these meal kits and, and it's been going well. Yeah. Sorry, then you from asked the, me a completely different question. And I no, that's I okay. we, digress to a completely different direction. <laughs> that's perfect because that gives us the background of, okay, you have a your TV show and then you were, okay, facing what everybody else in the world is facing, the pandemic. Okay, we pivot, milk kits. And now the app, but was also, was this also a natural transition from, okay, we are deciding to pivot everywhere. We decide meal kits now, blah, blah, blah. Are you going to expand in any other businesses too? Because this could give you a wider reach. But going back to the app, after the meal kits, what happened that you decided to launch the app? Well, we'll launch the app. Yes, we're, so the app was always part of our plan. We had created um, our five-year plan um, and, that was one of the key, key things within our plan, the app. Um, we felt that we need to be seen across all platforms and all available platforms today include, of course, our social media yeah. and our website. We had to improve our website and we saw the need to create the app. And um, I think this feels like a natural, natural progression for most businesses today um, in the content uh, content area and media, but you know, it's not for everybody. Uh, apps, I would say are not easy to create. I got, I got to tell you that now, I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> this is, this has been a challenge. We have been battling this for over six months now. Um, and I mean, I wish I knew how to code and do it myself, but you know, these are things that are outside of my expertise. So again, uh, how, how we went into this app, was because we had already planned it, but we had not planned it so soon. Mm, okay. we, we had planned for this to launch maybe in two years time. Once we were, once I felt we were more robust because the app will eventually have its content and that's going to be subscription based. Um, so I suppose we wanted to then also allocate a space for user generated content, similar to where you're going now for on YouTube and you're seeing all these cooking, um, shows that people are doing at home. We wanted to do curated, you know, we wanted to have curated content on our platform. Yeah. Okay. So what did, what did you have to change or not launch in this? Because you're saying you wanted to do it in two years. I'm sure you had already like a structured plan. In two years, everything of these things have to happen. Now, perhaps of the short, because of the short time, you had to decide what to keep and what not. Is there, is there something like that? 
happening? Yes. Yeah. So like I said, I think the main thing that we, we could not put into, into gear um, was the content itself. The, when I say sit up TV, you expect more content in terms of audiovisual content. And unfortunately right now we're still, uh, we're just focused on, on our recipes. So we're not able to get out and, and do the shoot outside of the main city uh, in Malaysia still, we're still under a sort of a semi controlled uh, lockdown situation. So we have a, a lot of restrictions still. Uh, so we, I guess to answer, I'm not, not sure what like, my question is going, my answer is going anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I think I think we've got that part that uh, the main component that obviously you love yes. a lot because it's it's your baby would be that content creation and a more relaxed environment where you can go and shoot outside or no, and eventually that I guess would happen when the restrictions are eased. Yes. So what would be the added value that the app brings to your business? Okay. So what. What we found a lot of people have been asking me is how am I monetizing from Sedap TV? The plain and honest truth is it's been hard because um, we relied on creating new content for brands. And that's where we started uh, earlier before the pandemic obviously hit us was that we were talking to f &B brands who wanted to reach into doing more things on the digital platform and focus more on social media um, and that's where all, you know, all the advertising money is going towards now, as, as most, uh, I think, of the world, it's happening the same thing. Here in Malaysia, I've, I've had less work with TV now because of the shift um, in media um, and our advertising monies. Advertisers are now no longer spending the mm -hmm. millions they used to on, on traditional platforms, traditional uh, television and satellite TV and uh, newspapers, obviously magazines, they're all suffering because advertising has now gone into the digital media platform. So this is added value to us because we are now going to be able to monetize from that, from this platform. Had we, I think, had we only focused on social media on its own, it would have been a much longer and tougher journey so I'm hoping, and, and it's still a, it's still basically in, in its planning um, process, but I'm, I'm looking forward to working with a lot of brands on, the digital, on this digital platform. So they're all, yeah, it's, it's gonna be exciting. I'm, I'm quite, quite excited to, to see where this is gonna bring us. And actually a lot of the time, I think we, right now, we don't really know where it's gonna go. And yeah. that's, part of the, that's part of the excitement, I think for me. But the great thing is that we see you're flexible and agile, so it doesn't matter where it goes. I'm sure you're going to have an idea and you're going to start working on that. You also mentioned that with the app is going to be membership based. This is the way that you monetize the app or there's any other avenues or channels. Well, perhaps also I just want to have a advertisement there. I don't want to be a member. Are there different ways for yeah. you to monetize yeah. it? So, yes, as I mentioned earlier, we're still creating that. We're still working on that. That will come in in phase two. So in phase one, our app is going to be free to okay. download and to use. Um, and our second phase will be when we have more content and that's when we will start uh, charging for a basic subscription. So like a premium um, a premium option where you'll get more access as members to uh, different types of content, more full uh, full range of content and also cooking, uh, cooking classes and access to some of our Malaysian chefs. Um, and, and there will be those value added um, aspects once we come into the monetizing of the of the uh, of the subscription but then you still will, will have some free component for people yes, to check yes. it out yes okay. yes for sure all the recipes and the shopping list and the uh, directory as what it is when we will launch um, in the next couple of weeks that will all be free continue to be so uh, the part that we will start to charge as part of the membership and we'll have lots of value added things to the membership so that will make it worthwhile i think the problem with you know, when we download an app, and I don't know about you, but when we when I download an app and it's free, and then for like the smallest thing, I've suddenly got to pay like two dollars here, and then yeah. the smallest other thing, I got to pay another three dollars there, and then suddenly I'm getting at the end of my month bill, and like, whoa, what did eighty dollars just go to? And we don't want that to happen. We 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 we'd like it to be very straightforward and for a nominal fee to, for you to be able to get the content that we're going to offer later on. 
very straightforward as you say yeah. would you do you believe that it's important for any app or digital platform to still have these free components to attract your clients or just out of the bat saying you know you have to have this membership if not you cannot even download the platform i am a great believer in free platforms um and uh, you know if if you look at the and this is somewhat on a tangent, but if you look at the biggest apps in, in the world that are successful, uh, your Instagrams and so on, I mean, they're all free apps for, for their own reasons, obviously. But um, I think it's very important still to have a free element to it. You know, who doesn't love a freebie? Um, it's <laughs> like when you go shopping, you know, and, and you, you'll pick up that one bottle of oil that has a teeny tiny bottle of oil next to it that comes free. Um, so I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's important that we give give back that information um, to people without having to charge them for everything. And, and I think that's very important for me, yeah. Yeah, that's, a, that's great psychology. Do you have any do's and don'ts when creating an app to share with our audience? Oh, so many. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us the story, the success and the failures. I think probably more don'ts than do's. <laughs> I think I covered the do's earlier, um, you know, research, plan, and uh, find the right people. Uh, those are your basic basic requirements for any business, um, be it an app or anything else. Then a really good marketing plan. Um, it's going to be that's going to be my next my next headache in the next few few months. Um, and keeping updated. Those those are the those are the important things. And I know I keep saying the twenty years. It's important to me to mention the twenty years because I've had to learn so many new things that never existed you know, 20 years ago. Um, I mean, I'm part of an era that we didn't have hand phones, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we, we, I, 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 I remember we were talking about it the other day. I remember having to dial online and you hear that, you know, that, that whole, I don't know. You, you, you yeah, it was like, <laughs> <laughs> it used to have this long dial up tone. So keeping up data is really important um, for, for everybody um, that, we don't get stuck, that we don't get stuck. And, and so that, you know, I don't get left behind um, my, my younger peers. So I need you guys to keep me updated. Uh, the don'ts, I would say, the don'ts, gosh, that is a rather long list, but you know what, I'll keep it, I'll keep it short to don't. Um, don't feel under pressure to rush. That's really important. Don't feel under pressure to um, create something that you don't believe in. And I think don't feel that you're not able to do it. And it goes back again to the confidence factor, you know. Um, don't listen to those few people that tell you, oh, no, that's, you know, oh, that's a bad idea, you know. Um, gee, there have been a lot of people who, who, and we've seen those movies, you know, where um, people had no faith in their friend or their family who, really thought they had a fantastic idea and then they become the millionaire. So uh, I think the, the lesson there is that if you really believe in what you're launching and what you're doing and what you're embarking upon, then go all out though. Like, don't be lazy about it <laughs> and don't expect it to fall on your lap in, in easily, uh, whether you have finance behind you or not. And um, that's a big thing. I mean, a lot of people don't have the disposable income to be able to, you know, plunk into a new business. But if you do, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be successful. No. You still need to work at it a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, and there is, there's no shortcut to this. Um, I think myself and, and, and Amy, we stayed up nights, days, sleepless hours, just working and working and working because we really enjoy it. You know, we're researching and we'll be forwarding stuff to each other all the time about, oh, did you see this? Oh, did you see that? And you know, you get excited. And when you have that excitement, you know you're onto something, you know? And yeah, I think that's really important. So that would be a big don't would be don't doubt, I think, yourself. 
Once again, I love that because it's true. The more you enjoy something, the more you're going to share ideas, share the knowledge, try to gain that knowledge yourself too. And I heard previously from a speaker a few days back, he was saying he was the world champion of speaking. When I was valid, be general people, random people, and they will give me their comments. And then I will go and ask an expert, my coach, or someone that would give me a completely different point of view. And then decide out of the coin board, making sure that you have a more holistic and mindful perspective to decide if your idea needs a little bit of a tweak or not. But as you're saying, don't let it go and don't doubt, because there's always going to be haters and there's going to always be cheerleaders. Yes. We, we need them both, kind of yeah. that, but yes. it's important yes. to validate you. Yes, absolutely. Before I open the floor to some questions, and I already know who am I going to ask to ask the first question, which is Rachel, she's there. Would you want to give yeah. us... <laughs> I have to say, Rachel was before in Canada, now she's in Thailand. She's recently landed here in Asia, so she's very excited to be also part of the community. Oh, yeah. Would you give us a last piece of advice or something that you would want our members to remember? Oh, wow. That was not part of the list of questions. <laughs> um, you you know your brand. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing to remember, I think we've said so many of those, uh, of the things that are so key. Um, but I, I think I would like to reiterate what you had just said right now. Talk to the right people, listen to the right people and um, you know, weigh out all those things that you hear, read um, and are told and then go with your instinct. Instincts, we are the mother of instincts. That's what women are built for, great instincts. We are the survivors in this world, let me tell you. So. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. Listen, absorb, and follow your instincts. Would you say that to a guy? <laughs> Would you say a guy to follow their uh, instincts? You know, guys are not so great at this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a real generalization. I'm just kidding. Um, yes, I think it's. I think it's really important for everybody to do that yeah. for sure. Not this uh, think, at, at least, right? Because a lot of us, we do dismiss our instincts. I have a raised yeah. hand by Rachel. Rachel, do you want to ask a question? For sure. Thank you so much, Yamalat. And thank you so much uh, for your insights about your app. I can't wait to see it released and downloaded and dive right in. Um, my question is, you. you have so much experience in business and branding in general. Um, what, how would you describe your personal brand? Gosh, wow. I never, I've never thought of it um, so much, to be honest. And I, I think I probably pale in comparison to, to some people who work really and do really well with their personal branding. Um, I've always just re really stayed very true to, to me. And I've just tried to make sure that, um, especially within, let's say, my personal social media and so on, I have always maintained a positive outlook. I've always maintained that um, anything is possible. You know, there's no such thing in this, in this world that's impossible. That's something my dad taught me. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's, that's probably the most, most important thing for me. I'm not sure that answers the question. <laughs> that, that, that definitely answers the question. I think it's so important. And I mean, we've only been in this meeting for an hour or so, but you can see that authenticity. Um, and how you speak and your passion just shines through and when you talk about your business and everything. So I think it's so important to stay authentic to who we are and whether it's online or offline. So thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel, for that question to Alina. And I agree, it's totally true. It, she just exudes energy and positive energy, which is very very difficult to do online not everybody has that ability so i want to congratulate you for that and obviously every little insight you gave us and the big ones i go away with the don't rush and don't create if you don't want and don't expect that things are going to fall from the sky but don't doubt if there's yeah. no any other questions we have me on the floor and i also see angeline remember you can always connect to our speakers with our 
social media, our platforms, or through connecting with the few team members. Nia, she's here on the floor. I'm sure she's going to share more links on the replay, and we will have more of these sessions coming up on Thursday and next week. As always, hashtag as few anything you ask, we answer. Thank you very much, Elena, for all of your insights. You. If there is anything else you want to leave our audience with, if not, I want to thank everybody for being here today with us, and I'll see you on Thursday. If you can't connect with us, I will really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Nia. Uh, Angelina is saying thank you to you too. Claps. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Can't wait to download the app either. I'm just going to get all those recipes. Yes, I'm excited for you to do that. <laughs> I'll let you know how it goes if I turn into a cook finally, because my boyfriend is always saying, oh, you're the only Mexican that can't cook. Maybe I'll surprise him. Trust me, my sister always tells people that she can burn water and she can now cook. So, <laughs> have faith. That's very exciting. Thank you again. See Take you care. next time Thank to you. our few, so few members and a few committee. Bye-bye.